guys, welcome to another electric playthrough. My name is Rob, and today I'm going to be playing Zelda 2 The Adventure of Link. This is a game that I've wanted to start for a while for you guys. Uh, I'm actually going to be doing this in a series of videos. Uh, so this is going to be the first part. Uh, and as I go through, I'm just going to be kind of uh, explaining the things that I like about it and some of the more underrated aspects. And, um, yeah, just kind of giving you a general overview of how to actually beat it. So, as you can see, I've beaten this game before. And I'm actually proud of this. I beat this game. Uh, I got to the, the New Game Plus, and I had never leveled up my attack, which is extremely difficult. But anyways, any Zelda game I ever play, I always make my file link. All right, let's get this started. So unlike other Zelda games, you start out with Zelda with three lives in this palace and your goal isn't to defeat Ganon, but to stop his resurrection and wake up this Zelda who's been sleeping for a very long time apparently. So the first thing that you want to do is uh, get a quick level up, come up come up into this little forest area. Watch out for what I believe are keys. I'm not really sure what these bad guys are called. Just kind of going by other Zelda games. There you go. And then you gain experience points. And 50 points to level up your life, 100 for magic, 200 for attack. Uh, you can cancel and bank your points, and then when you get up to those higher numbers, you can get those. But I'm not really gonna do too much of that. I'll end up getting to the level cap anyways in this playthrough. Um, and I do what I kind of refer to as active grinding, where I don't actually go out of my way to grind, but I make sure I'm getting the experience I need as I go. So your next stop is right here in what I think is pronounced as Rauru, which is one of the sages from Ocarina of Time. So it kind of works backwards in that they named the towns after the sages in universe but the game's creators actually named the sages after the towns in this game so so these women in the red dresses refill your health which I don't really need but I did it anyway so you can see and then every town has a wise man in it she says talk to my father before you leave town. And then if you talk to her again, she'll tell you every town has a wise man who will give you a magic spell or something like that. So. He gives you the shield spell, which ups your defense while you're on the screen. When you use that, you just put the little cursor next to it and then hit select. Uses half your magic and you're red until you leave the screen. Pretty handy. Uh, I'll use it mostly against boss fights or if I get into trouble. Um, I will probably go through this whole playthrough without dying, but uh, if I do, um, it'll likely be because I fall into a pool of lava or some water, an enemy will knock me in, something like that. There we go. And the way your shield works in this game, uh, it's always active. Real quick, there's going to be an invisible... Um, it's supposed to be in the dark here. See those little feet moving? There you go. So, your shield, it's always active. And you either hold it neutral, which is high, or down low. And that's how you block enemy attacks. So the combat is actually a little bit more complex in this than in some other Zelda games. I mean, not as complex as, like, Ocarina of Time, with, like, Z-targeting and things like that, but it's more complex than a lot of side-scrolling combat games. So before you go north into the palace, make your way south, Parappa Desert here, and then there's an unskippable action scene right here. Action screen, I believe it's called. Now, these bubbles, while they don't cause a lot of damage, they can knock you into the water and you will lose a life instantly. And you don't have a lot of lives. And if you get a game over, 
you lose all the experience you've built up to that you haven't used to level up. And you also um, lose your progress. And you get sent all the way back to the castle with Sleeping Zelda. And we don't want to do that. So another action screen. Takes you right here to this Stonehenge looking area. And this is a good place. These guys are, are good enemies for uh, practicing your shielding. You just kind of block his boomerangs. I like to kill him before I grab the heart container because it gives you a health refill. And then you just leave and you're ready to take on the first dungeon. Of course, you have to traverse the bubble water rock nightmare again. This is, uh, no matter how good I get at this game, this is the area that uh, causes me to start over the most. If I waste a life getting hit by a stupid bubble right in the beginning, I'll just start over. Alright, the first palace, which uh, you might recognize as the temple stage from Super Smash Brothers. The music is very iconic because of Smash Bros. and this game. Um, as well as a lot of Link's attacks ooh, um, come from this game. A lot of his attacks in Smash Bros. Bros. I should say. Um, because I guess the creators, oops, when they were creating Link's character didn't have a lot of uh, side-scrolling games to go on to um, form Link's moveset. So these guys, they don't aim low ever. They're just gonna smack your shield. So what you want to do, and this will this will work for most shielded enemies, is you're going to wait for the timing to be right between their swings, take a step forward into their attack pattern, and then aim low. Boom. Boom. Easy. Three hits and he's done. Weasel enemies, they die in like one hit. But yeah, as you saw from me picking up that key, you have to slash certain items to pick them up. Uh, potions, um, pea bags, which pea bags have extra experience points. And keys. So that's it for that whole wing of the castle. This, this castle, dungeon, temple, whatever you want to call it, uh, this one is very straightforward. Some of the ones later become more maze-like, but we'll go over those when we get to them. And the keys open that automatically. And those are called bubbles. Uh, they can be killed. I don't like to fight that one because these enemies just spawn forever and they give you no experience. And you'll slowly get smacked around and lose a bunch of health. So what I like to do is... Uh, it's probably the closest thing to grinding you'll see me do is take out some of these bubbles early on just to get some quick levels early and I'll show you how that how that goes but I try not to skip enemies because you do need the experience points and it it uh, stacks pretty quickly okay so for this guy I don't know how many hits it takes maybe close to a hundred it's a lot but it gives me a chance to explain that if you swing this is me clicking as fast as I can. If you slow it down a little bit, you swing faster. It's weird. It's it's like you're able to cancel the animation if you get a rhythm going of hitting the attack button just as Link pulls his arm back. When you get off rhythm, you see it kind of stutters. But if you go just shy of as fast as you can swing, there we go. Then you will get through those guys a little bit quicker good thing to practice, especially because this thing takes so long to die anyways that, I don't know, you should get the hang of it quickly. A lot of people say that this game is extremely difficult, and I'm not going to stand here and tell you that this game is easy, but it's definitely no Battletoads or Ninja Turtles on NES or, you know, any of those famously difficult games. Once you practice and you know what you're doing, it's, the combat is very rewarding. The, uh, the difficulty curve is very fair, and you can just get nice and powerful, oops, if you level up correctly. But like any any game, it takes just 
practice to get good at it. I think the big thing with this game is that it doesn't... Oof. Hold on, let me kill this guy. There we go. There we go, and a life level up will uh, refill your health. And also, this statue right here, when you hit him, he drops a full magic refill. Blue refills one little cube of magic, I believe. Red refills it all the way. Um, see, I'll use shield and fill it up. Really no reason to do that. Um, that'll have some applications later that I'll get to. But anyways, this game, if you know what you're doing, and, and you pay attention, and you just practice certain things, and don't just try and muscle your way through, it's not that bad. I mean, like I said, I beat this whole game without ever leveling up my attack. So... Okay. And then go back this way. I don't have every dungeon memorized, but I have a pretty good feel for them. So, oops. So, uh, it's... I don't think I'm going to end up getting lost at any point in this series. But, uh, some of the dungeons do tend to be a little labyrinthian. And then once you uh, level up your attack a bit, killing the bubbles is not the nightmare it is early in the game. But also, once you get up to that point, 50 XP isn't worth that much. So really, the only time worth doing this is in the beginning. Get that attack rhythm down. And I will say, the combat in this game, like the way Link swings his sword, if you look, he actually wheels back his arm, and you know, it's like, backslash back again. It, it's very satisfying. It, it's, they were able to add weight. Oh wow, he respawned. Uh, they were able to add weight to Link's little 8-bit sprite. Like when you hit things, you bounce off them. I don't know, it feels good and hefty. <clears throat> it's something that uh, I have never experienced in another game. And one of the reasons why Zelda 2 is, it's definitely in my top three Zelda games. Lots of bubbles in here. Oof. Take your time. Take your time. You gotta preserve your... Okay, well. Forget that. Just run through. <laughs> you gotta know when it's best to run through, when it's best to take your time. It's... This game takes some patience. So this doesn't look... This isn't as dangerous as it looks. I had plenty of time to stop and grab that. Um, it just looks stressful. Come on. There we go. Alright, now this will be your first... Hold on. There we go. Wait for your opening. The real trouble with him is when he jumps, you have to be able to retreat from him. Come on. There we go. Oh. And like every, I think it's like 10th enemy or so, an item drop is guaranteed. Uh, okay, so this guy is going to be your first real challenge. His little shimmy, little legs. Okay, so the way you, they want you to fight him is you want to focus on the sword. Attacking him is secondary. Focus on your defense and then swing where... His shield is not, which he will raise and lower, but it's more important that you block his attacks than it is you do damage. So be patient, and um, I do recommend learning to do that. Oh, here we go. It's a candle. This will illuminate the caves, which the game doesn't tell you, but when you get to the caves, you'll just notice them illuminated. So, you know, there's a lot of show-don't-tell. But anyways, back to those little soldier guys. I think they're Dark Nuts, I think. Um... Either, yeah, whatever they are. Um, uh, I'll show you an easier way to defeat them later, but I do recommend learning to do that in case you ever get yourself into a pickle and actually need to uh, use some close range combat. Alright, back through here. I'm actually going to throw my shield on because I'm likely going to get smacked a little bit by these guys. Might as well do this. And you can really like stand inside these guys. There we go. It's a 
good rhythm. And the quick one does not give you any more points than the slow one. But I just got him in this death strangle, smacking him with my sword. And in fact, killing this guy will give me another level up. I like to get as many levels as I can early on, and I'll explain more about why later. See, now my attack is two. And then the magic uh, shield spell fades as you leave the screen. So the graphics for this game, I think, well, well, things like this dungeon is very samey from one screen to the other. There's not a lot of variety, and the later dungeons will just kind of change colors. Uh, I do think that the graphics in this game are beautiful, like the sprite work of Link and the enemies. I think, I mean, look at Link. He's it's big and bright. He's got his little flesh-colored sword. He's swinging around. There we go. Look at that. I don't know. I, th I think the sprite work is the highlight. And then you can go get these little fairies to refill all your health. So we've finished up. And everything to the left and right. So the only place left to go is down. I have this dungeon pretty well memorized. Alright, here we go. Let's beat him the old-fashioned way. There we go. Boom, another 50 points. See, in early, you level up so quickly, like most RPGs, I'm already on my way to another level growth, so... Wait for your gap, there we go. Make sure you grab your keys. Boom. So everything's dying quicker now that I'm attack level two. All right, now I'm gonna show you the quicker way to beat these guys. There's a weird spot at the top of his head that uh, you can slash over the top of even if his shield's in the way. So you wanna jump and drop your sword down on top of his head. He can't do anything. Oh, I really would have liked that experience. If you're gonna get a magic refill, might as well use whatever magic you have left. All right, and here is the boss of Castle One, Bojack Horseman. And this guy, uh, similar to how I was just beating that little soldier dude, is uh, his weak point is his head. So you're gonna have to jump, I'm gonna use my shield, and attack, 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 just like that. Watch out for his mace, he does pretty heavy damage. Not so bad if you have the shield or if you've leveled up accordingly. Or appropriately, I should say. Oof, this is cutting it real close here. Watcha! There we go. Raise the magic. Get a key. And in most Zelda games, you're going dungeon to dungeon acquiring things. You know, whatever they may be. Medallions, jewels, whatever crystals. In this game, you're actually going around and placing things in the dungeons. And what you can do is, first of all, whenever you beat a, a castle, you get a free level up. Boom. Life is level four. So what you can do, actually, is if you jump over this area, you can just leave and not place the crystal. And then at the end of the game, whenever her levels cost a lot of experience, you just do lap through the game, dropping all the crystals, and level up really quickly. It's not going to be necessary for us, because if you follow along with what I'm doing, or kind of use my strategies, you will have absolutely no problem reaching the level cap. Alright, and then as you pass back through this cave, you'll notice it's nice and illuminated. Because you got that candle. And that's how most of the items work in this game. You're not going to be throwing boomerangs, shooting hook shots, 
using items a lot. Most of them are passive. Things like that. You'll get a raft. You'll get a, um, you know, a candle. Things like that. But anyways, that was the uh, Parappa Palace and the end of part one.